What's up, everyone? This is Nate, and I am back with another out of the theater review. I just got home, literally just walked in the door, sat down here and started recording this from Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, this is, of course, the fifth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. The first one that is not directed by Steven Spielberg. This one was directed by James Mangold, who is a director that I like. I will say when he was announced as the director, I was... I wasn't excited, but I thought that was a good choice. It did make me a little bit more interested in this movie and what they were going to do. Then I saw some trailers. They didn't do much for me, to be honest. I think they didn't look that great. I think some of the marketing wasn't great for this movie. Then the reviews came out of Cannes and they were bad. Um, the reviews are really bad. And, um, you know, I still try to go in with not having a preconceived notion about the movie. So I went in. I'm like, I'm going to give this a try. I like the franchise. We've reviewed it on the Action Movie Guys podcast. And so we reviewed the whole franchise. What did I think of this one? I have positives. I have negatives. So as far as the positives go, I think the set pieces are great. I think James Mangle did a really great job. As far as the direction, I don't really have any issues with the direction. I think, you know, the opening sequence that takes place, you've seen it in the trailer where they, you know, de-aged Harrison Ford. And it looks fine and let Unless he talks. When he talks, it's a little wonky. But overall, it looks fine. But that set piece, which is uh, set during World War II and it's on a train, I thought it was great. It felt like it reminded me of the old Indiana Jones films, except a little bit more modern, you know, some more modern effects and things. But for the most part, it was, uh, you know, it was people running, jumping, punching, climbing, riding motorcycles, driving cars. Like, it was a really good set piece. And beyond that... I thought the rest of the set pieces were fun. There's one in Tangiers that was a lot of fun. I, I thought it was very entertaining. So yeah, the action scenes are fine. I, I think they're actually pretty well done. Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, um, he's good. Of course, he is good. He still feels like him as the movie progresses. I think in the early stages, and, and this will be spoiler free, of course, but in the early stages, he did not feel... I don't know how to explain this. Indiana Jones as a character has always been very confident, uh, very, you know, he's a adventurer. He's a tough guy, uh, but but kind, you know, like he's just a, an awesome character. And the beginning of this, you know, they do the whole Disney thing where they just can't help themselves. And it's like a, he's a drunk and he's a, old and he's got marital problems. And it's like, OK, shh, whatever. I didn't love all that beginning part. Once he gets in the saddle, and gets going with like the actual plot, the adventure plot of the movie. I thought he was good. I thought he was good. I thought Harrison Ford was fine. I think as far as the action goes, they were smart to have most of it. I, obviously, he's older. Most of it is like driving or there's one part where they're doing scuba diving, which is like pretty slow pace. Like um, he punches guys here and there, but he's not like doing super, super crazy stuff. Uh, throughout, which was a smart move. And then as far as the plot, I thought the plot was interesting. You know, I liked that, you know, this is a Indiana Jones movie. There's an artifact. The bad guys want it. He wants it for very different reasons. And they're both trying to get it. And then usually at the end of the movie, something mystical happens. Right? And this is no different. It follows that formula. So I thought it was fine. Um, as far as the negatives, I hated, I absolutely hated Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. I mean, it most uh, most of the time it felt like she was the main character and Indiana Jones was helping her along the way. It did not to me at least. It did not feel like they were a team. You know, every movie he has some sort of sidekick uh, whether it's Marion in the first film or like his dad in the third film or Short Round and like that's fine. But it always felt like he was the main star. And there's a lot of moments here where it felt like she was the main star. And she's just super smart and great at fighting, great at everything. You know, this is a typical of the current Disney type films. Um, you know, the strong female character where it's just like amazing at everything and has no flaws. It's one of those characters. And it got annoying to me after a while. It's like, OK, whatever. So I didn't like that. I, I'm, I'm like... Let's make it Indiana Jones movie that's about Indiana Jones. And if she's a sidekick, great. If she's a good sidekick, great. But uh, but it just felt like he took a back seat a lot of times, and I wasn't crazy about that. Also, there's a kid character who's like another sidekick. Now, he actually felt like a sidekick, 
But he's no short round. I feel like they were trying to do like another short round and he's just not as good. He's not as interesting. He was okay. He was like a little a little street thief kid who was like uh that came with her character. It was whatever. Mads Mickelson as the villain, he's fine. I like I like Mads Mickelson a lot. I just feel like this villain was whatever, you know, he he wants this thing and he's going to try to get it to change history. And uh lastly, it's just way too long. The movie's way too long. These movies are all about 2 hours which is fine, you know, maybe a little under two hours. This one's like two and a half hours. And it by the end of it, I felt like I was watching it for three and a half hours. I'll just put it that way. Some of the pacing is not great. Like, it just drags on. Like, it goes on and on. And, like, my movie started at 740, and we got out well past 10. And I'm like, man, this is just way too long. So ne- those are my negatives. Overall, I think the movie was fine. I didn't hate it. Uh, by the time it was over, I was like, okay, that was fine. There was some good action. I'm an action, you know, I love action. Um, and I thought the set pieces were good. Indy mostly felt like Indy. I thought the very end was really good. I did like the last, like, I would say 10 minutes or so. I thought that was really solid. Uh, but overall, I, I, again, I, I don't know if this is the worst one in the, in the franchise, the way some people do. You know, this and Crystal Skull, this might be a little bit better. I think this might be a little bit better. But um, it's still not great. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's solid. It's good. Could have been better or just not existed. Like, it's pointless, really. Just watch the first three. If you love Crystal Skull, if you're one of those, watch all four. But just watch the first three and be happy. This was pointless, but it's also okay. So 7 out of 10 for me. Of course, if you liked the video, please go ahead and drop a like down below. Uh, Leave a comment. Did you see this movie? What are your thoughts on it? What's your score? Did you hate it? Like, a lot of other people seem or do you think it wasn't as bad um and of course if you would please consider subscribing to the channel we put out videos every week and live shows every other week so please subscribe hit that bell icon that way you get notified of new videos um next week i will be reviewing insidious chapter five so keep an eye out for that until then take it easy